Come on, we've got to identify the thief. We've got to identify the robber, and we've got to run him out of the territory. Amen? Some of us may have felt like the enemy's pushed in on us and robbed some things from us. Anybody here feel like you've gone through times, I'm not even saying even right now, but times that you feel like, Money has been robbed. How many feel like ever money has been robbed? You just like, like the enemy created a hole in your bucket and drained money away unnecessarily or actually physically robbed you or different, different ways that the enemy robs from us. He robs from our peace. He robs from um, our families, our, our children, our, our children's children. He robs in so many different ways. And so what we've got to do is that we've got to have our eyes opened and our eyes fixed you've got to have situational awareness. And you know, in the spirit, I hear the Lord saying that to us in the spirit, saying you've got to have situational awareness. You've got to be aware that the enemy is looking for an opportunity. Now, we're covered in the blood of Jesus. We are bought with the price. Jesus paid a price for us. But even Jesus said, listen, the devil's walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He didn't tell us that so that we would walk and live in fear. He told us that so that we would be situationally aware. So the thief is like that and we need to be aware but how many of you have ever come out of a situation where maybe you weren't aware maybe the enemy did come in maybe he picked your pocket spiritually maybe he picked your pocket of peace peter piper picked a peck of pickle pepper so he just keeps it okay <laughs> maybe he picked your pocket of peace or prosperity or picked your pocket of your divine purpose your identity whatever it is that he's coming and he's robbed from you you know what can happen is we can start feeling defeated. We can start feeling ashamed, like, oh, I should have known better. I should have this, that, or the other. I'm telling you, I wrote a book on discernment, and within the first year of writing the book of discernment, I had several different things that happened around us that I should have discerned. And you know what the devil came in and he said to me? He said, oh, and you wrote the book on discernment. Look at you. How I many know the enemy's always faithful to tell you all your mistakes, beat up on you, try to beat you down, because then if he gets you into that position, you're never going to be the one that pursues the thief and takes back double. Because you know that's what it says in Exodus chapter 22, verse 7. It says, if you catch a thief, he's got to restore double. There's another scripture that actually says he's got to restore sevenfold. So I hope that your little brains right now are making a little list of things, okay? And so when the enemy comes in and he tries to trip us up, tries to get us in situations that maybe we're not living at the highest point of victory in our lives, the Lord, I want to just remind you something the Lord said to me a number of years ago. He said, I want you to tell the people of God this. He said, I want you to tell them that I'm a comeback God and that their setback is only a setup for a mighty comeback. Your setback is only a setup for a mighty comeback. So when the Lord said that to me, of course I did what most prophets would do, is I Googled the word comeback. Very spiritual, I know. But just listen to this definition. A comeback is a regaining of success, fame, health, prosperity, it is, it literally means recovery. It means, get this, revival. It means resurgence. It means to return to a former good position or condition after a loss. I'm happy to send this to anybody that needs it at the end. Um, and it's the act of making up for a deficit or when you're down in points and you make a comeback. Okay, how many have ever seen a team make a, make a comeback? I remember a few years ago in the Super Bowl, I hate the Patriots. I'll tell you what, I'm sorry, Patriot fans, but I do. And we were watching the Super Bowl, and Tom Brady, to me, had just won one too many Super Bowl. He is not my friend. I was not a fan, okay? <laughs> he left his pregnant wife when she was eight months pregnant and went after a supermodel. My husband's like, get off of it, okay? But I always say that, I, that on, on, on a football Sunday, we root for two people. We root for the Dallas Cowboys, and we root for whoever's playing the Patriots, okay? 
But I, but I have to say this. I have to say this, is that they staged one of the most phenomenal comebacks that you, you even though I don't like Tom Brady, I had, you had to even give it to him. The guy is a comeback king. I mean, he was amazing that, that no matter how far behind they were, he knew how to always stage a comeback. And that's how we ought to be. Your setback's only a setup for a mighty comeback. That'll make that a memorable game down through history because of the comeback. Some of you might feel like you've suffered some setbacks in your life, but I'm telling you, it's just a setup in your life. Let me read you just a little list of some people that I wrote about that I just kind of sat down and wrote a little list, and there's probably tons more because the Bible is filled with comeback stories. All right, let me just give you one. Moses was a murderer and a fugitive who became a great deliverer and became known as a friend of God. That's a comeback story. Joseph was the dreamer, forgotten in prison in a foreign land, who became the prime minister of the greatest empire of the day. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Great King David, right? Adulterer and a murderer who became the greatest king Israel ever knew and whose legacy is that he was a man after God's own heart. A comeback. Job lost everything through no fault of his own, yet God restored double of everything that was lost. Y'all know that, right? Double. The temple was destroyed, but then it got rebuilt, and the second time it was built, it was twice the size, and it was built with Babylonian money. Did you know that? They took all the Babylonian wealth and sent it to Israel, and they rebuilt the temple twice the size. Come back. Peter denied Christ three times, but was used by God to preach on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 souls came to Jesus. Come on, just a few days before, <laughs> you get it? Just a few days before, he was denying Jesus and saying, I never knew him, and God still chose him to, to preach and to win thousands of souls. And, of course, the greatest comeback story of all was Jesus. Beaten, crucified, killed. Yet he conquered death. He conquered hell and the grave. Came back to life, and now he's seated at the right hand of God, the throne of, of honor right next to, to God.